dementia residents and dementia units can often have a very good past memory. And it's important to tap into that because it helps cognition, it helps build confidence, build back confidence, and it's very good for communication. But it does take some preparation because you can't just sort of sit there and expect the person to just go straight back to past memories, though sometimes they can. But if it's facilitated by bringing in like a scrapbook, photo albums, photos of the children and holidays when you went, you know, for lovely seaside holidays when the children were younger. If you bring in something to facilitate the past memories, it's much more likely to be an activating experience and an enjoyable experience for both parties. So, for example, if you've got photo albums of when the children are young, and then you've got other photo albums of before that when you were married and maybe went overseas, you'll be able to see which photos the dementia resident clicks in with best and can remember best. So if it's uh, the time with the children that they remember most of, activate that, bring in that album more often, spend a lot of time on each photo. That's often actually a good idea rather than skimming through a whole lot of photos superficially, too much content and information. It's good just to take a few photos, just maybe a page or two of one holiday that you've had that the dementia resident can remember and just keep going into the depth of detail of that. And especially those details that they do remember, maybe for example, the blue batch, blue painted batch, that used to stay in by Sumner Beach and that scene of Sumner Beach they remember because that's where you used to go for your summer holidays every year. So that's a standard. Now, with the children being young, what you can do is just write under each child their name, big letters, so the person can hopefully read it and if not, read it out to them so that they can start to orientate to the children, their names, more likely to remember them when they're younger. And then if they're regularly visiting, they will remember them. But if they've been overseas and haven't for some time, chances are they won't. So linking back to those photos when they're younger. And if, for example, one of the children, John, is about to visit from overseas, he's been in Australia for six months, do that whole preparation of saying, look, dear, um, John's coming from Australia and you haven't seen him for some time, so you might not recognize him, but this is the photo of him when he was a child. This is the other fo photo of him when he's a teenager. Here he's graduated from university. You remember that? We both went to that, you know, when he was capped at university in Dunedin. And just show John through a series of photos and familiarize your partner with the trajectory of John's life. And then towards the time of John coming in to visit. Now, dear, you know, John's coming very soon. Um, he's going to be visiting next Tuesday. And just that anticipatory excitement, have that noted. And then put the event when John is actually coming up on the whiteboard. And so in that way, everything's in place. The past memories are clear the whiteboard for readings there for reference, lots of reminders and being there just before John comes in, uh, saying to your partner now, you know, John's about to come very soon now, dear. Now, um, you'll remember his name because I'm telling you now and uh, et cetera. And then when John does come in, you be there as well. And how lovely it is to see you, John. And of course, the person with dementia can pick up on the name with that cue as you give it. So in that way, everything's covered and there's not the embarrassment of John, the son coming in and the person with dementia not remembering. So these are just ways and means of being able to get through a loss of present memory functioning. And there's many ways to stimulate past memory functioning. Music, movies, you know, favourite movies, really good idea. The mo not, not necessarily movies they haven't seen before and are not familiar with. It's better to bring out movies that the person knows and that they are familiar with, even if they've seen them a few times. You know, I know at the unit where I worked, the favourite movie was Gone with the Wind, for sure. Rick Butler, Scarlett O'Hara. 
and you know the flaming house and southern america and etc and some of the residents had seen that movie four five times it was such a hit and so to see that again they can tap into the past memories of having seen that movie before they love it all those good powerful exciting feelings are familiar with the script if the subtitles are put on so that they can be read then they can get a really good experience of the movie especially when you're sitting by them enjoying it with them and that's one way of being able to connect in with past memories similarly with favorite uh, musicians that you like you can sit and listen to that favorite music together and that's a good activity all of it linking into past memories and cognition so it's it's Use your imagination a little. I mean, even crosswords are excellent. No, not crosswords. Jigsaw puzzles are actually a really good way of being able to tap into past memories of your own country. If you have a jigsaw puzzle of your country, say Australia, and you live in Australia, you've got the big map of Australia, and um, you know, and if you've travelled widely in Australia, Sydney, Melbourne, you know, Northern Territories, whatever, you can discuss those places that you've visited and had holidays in in Australia and enjoyed as you're doing the jigsaw puzzle past memories again. So whenever you come into the unit, it's just good. Well, it's just good to have a pile of activities at hand, actually, in the person's room or wardrobe or drawers or whatever, so that you can pull them out, especially if conversations are lagging and it's a bit too quiet and you know, you can't get things moving. Having things like a jigsaw puzzle available to do together is a nice activity without the strain of always trying to make conversation, which can be a strain at times or at least a big effort. So I've written on these topics at length in the two books, The Resident's Voice from a Dementia Unit and The Resident's Rise from a Dementia Unit, both on Amazon and both in the description below, pietervalentine.com being my website. All the information is below in the description. So that it's good reading, an essential reading really for people going into dementia units. So much to learn. And the resident's voice is what you need to know for the person going into the facility and the resident's rise once they're already in it. So thank you for your viewing and your subscriptions and your interest. Thank you. And please pass on the links. Thank you. And subscribe. Thank you.